not a game, it's a red thing. Extreme drought exposes theropod dinosaur tracks in Texas River. A record drought in Texas has exposed a bunch of 110 million year old dinosaur tracks in yet another example of how climate changes, both revealing new things and making us uncomfortable. As lakes, rivers and streams dry up around the world, archaeological and anthropological gold is being revealed. This was made evident in Europe over the last week after a wealth of finds were reported. Six days ago The Guardian reported that in the River Elbe, which connects the Czech Republic with Germany, a collection of mysterious 15th century hunger stones were revealed. Then four days ago, Business Insider reported that in the Danube, near the Serbian village of Prohovo, two Nazi shipwrecks from 1944 appeared from the riverbed. Now, in a freshly dried up riverbed at the Dinosaur Valley State Park in Texas, rare dinosaur tracks have been exposed, measured, and filmed. Rare dinosaur tracks on the Cretaceous Dino Highway of Texas this summer has seen a severe lack of rain and record high temperatures in Texas. The Texas Tribune reports 27% of Texas is under an exceptional drought warning, while a further 62% is enduring an extreme drought. A report in IFL Science said the Dinosaur Valley State Park in Texas was like a prehistoric highway in the early Cretaceous period but it is only after the recent severe droughts in the Paluxy River that sill was revealed in shallow water, in which the giant footprints were spotted. The dinosaur tracks were first discovered in the early 20th century following a massive flood on the Paluxy River. At that time, Paleontologists described three-toed theropod prints but later research also identified sauropod footprints which represent the first distinct sauropod tracks ever discovered anywhere. So why here? Texas was T-Rex turf but there are many kinds of theropods according to the Bureau of Economic Geology website. About 120 million years ago in Texas bays and lagoons on the west the shore of a shallow sea, dinosaurs walked across muddy lime sediments. Fine silt and clay sediments then washed in from land areas to the north and west and buried the tracks beneath lime sandbars, which quickly cemented into hard limestone. Over the last 100 million years erosion of the Paluxy River has stripped off the softer shale but has left the limestone ledges in which the prints were identified. Tracking the high spine lizard measuring over 30 cm each from heel to claw, these new tracks are too small for T-Rex and were created by its cousin, Acrocanthosaurus. According to ABC Dino this very large genus was first discovered in Atoka County, Oklahoma in the 1940s, but it also roamed the ancient plains of what are today the states of Wyoming and Texas. Around 110 million years ago, the UK's Natural History Museum refers to this particular creature as an enormous carnivore and its physical description is locked within its name. Pronounced Acrocongosaurus, this means high spine lizard, a name chosen after scientists calculated it was 11 meters 36 feet long. However, as fascinating as these tracks are, they'll have to go a long way to compete with the twin sets of tracks discovered in 1908 in limestone deposits along the Paluxy River that brought the academic world to a standstill. Did archaic humans and dinosaurs coexist? In 1908 it was clear that one of the sets of tracks was left by a giant dinosaur. However, the second set of prints was much smaller, and they were interpreted as human, sparking the debate as to whether humans and non-avian dinosaurs lived at the same time, or not. Shocked two leading anti-creationists D. H. Milne and S. D. Schaefersman, at that time pushed back and wrote such an occurrence, if verified, would seriously disrupt conventional interpretations of biological and geological history and would support the doctrines of creationism and catastrophism, stated the Milne and Schaefersman report. Eventually, after a long professorial fight, the second track was officially recognized as having been created by a small dinosaur. Notwithstanding, the modern Institute of Creation Research still finds a way to use these twin prints to their advantage.
The Institute's website currently says that while the second set of prints are too ambiguous to be used as an anti-evolution argument, they just might be coming into their own as good evidence for flood catastrophism.